Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game played between the third world chess champion Jose Raul Capablanca and Russian chess master Alexander Ilyin Zhenevsky. But before starting the game an interesting fact about Ilyin Zhenevsky. It turns out that Ilyin Zhenevsky learned how to play chess twice. First when he was still a kid, but when World War I broke out he got a severe concussion, lost his memory and the ability to play chess. So he had to start all over again and learn how to play chess for the second time. And then came 1925 and at Moscow International Tournament he faced the reigning world chess champion. Without further ado now let's see what happened on the board. Capablanca had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Ilyin Zhenevsky answered with Sicilian defense. Knight c3, knight c6, g3. White is going for the close Sicilian. Bishop g2, bishop g7, knight g2, keeping the f pawn's path free. d6, d3, knight f6. Well, nowadays the following setup is considered to be very effective when fighting against close Sicilian. Black is usually playing e6 and is putting the kingside knight on e7, thus keeping the dark squared bishop's diagonal free. And then is playing rook b8 and is starting a queenside pawn push. But in the game we see knight f6, after which both players castled kingside h3 a6. Uh, this seems to be a bit time consuming, switching the rook into the attack as soon as possible. Supporting this rook and launching a pawn storm is better. But instead we see a6, bishop e3, bishop d7, queen d2, rook e8, knight d1, rook c8, c3, queen a5, g4. White is playing very aggressively and on the other hand seems like that Zhenevsky has acquired a bit passive looking defensive strategy. Rook e d8, well another passive looking move. At this point h5 can be a nice way of stopping white's attack. If g5 then knight h7. Black is getting a very solid position. Instead we see rook e d8, f4 bishop e8. Yes, once again we can see that against the world chess champion Zhenevsky is playing very cautiously and is making very solid defensive moves and meanwhile Capablanca is intensifying the pressure. Knight goes back on d7, f5, b5, knight f4, b4, f6. Well, f6 seems to be a bit strange looking move after which Black is managing to form a very solid defense. At this point making a move like knight d5 is better. Keeping the tension on the king's side is always good and when you are playing f6 you are locking up the position thus you are giving your opponent a chance to survive. And now if e6 then f takes e6 and then knight f6 check and in this case actually yes white has a very dangerous attack. This is of course better than the move which we see in our game. In our game f6 was made. Bishop f8, knight f2, b takes c3, b takes c3, e6, h4, rook b8. Black rook is occupying the open b file but at this point still it was not too late to play h5. This could neutralize white's attack successfully. If g takes h6 then knight takes f6. If here then g takes h5. Of course this may seem a bit daring, you are exposing your king but uh, black king is in safety. Instead we see rook b8. There comes h5. Rook b6, black wants to double up his rooks and meanwhile white is managing to open up the h file. Knight d1, freeing the f2 square for the queen and also opening up the rook's path. Knight d e5, queen f2, knight g4, queen h4, knight c e5, d4. Well, not a good move, at this point white is missing a very crushing line. It was better first to play bishop d2 or protecting this pawn moving away the bishop from e3 when it was under attack and uh, freeing this knight in order to neutralize black knight. If rook db8 then knight f2, if rook b2 then knight takes g4 and then bishop e1 and already white is ready to switch his rook into the attack. If knight e5 covering the f3 square then king h2 followed by king g3 and then rook h1. Seems like that white has an irresistible attack. Instead we see d4 by Capablanca. Here comes knight takes e3, knight takes e3, queen takes c3. White played in a very hasty way and lost the pawn on c3. d takes e5, queen takes e3 check, king h1, 
d takes e5, rook f3. Uh, a mistake. I have to tell you that at this point already we have an equality and there is no way to target this black king. This line starting with knight takes g6 only leads to an equal game. If here then queen e2, so the idea is that knight rook h3 then queen h5 and if rook a f1 threatening f7 then rook d1. Yeah, you are free to announce f7 check, black king capture, and then on f1, if bishop takes f1, then queen h5, and we have an equality on the board. Seems like that this is going to end up in a draw with opposite color bishops. But in the game, we see rook f3 attacking black queen and also threatening rook h3. But Kapablanka missed a very powerful defensive move by Ilyan Zhenevsky, and that move is an absolutely staggering. Probably you may have already guessed, e takes f4. This queen sacrifice not only allows black to gain advantage, but also neutralize white's attack. Now if rook h3, then black will win this rook, that's why white accepted the queen sacrifice and once this attacking piece is gone now it will be black who will start a counter attack queen e1 the single queen can't do anything on the king side and is coming after this e pawn meanwhile black rooks are penetrating white's camp bishop f3 well if uh, rook g1 then you will lose your uh, pawn on a2 that's why white played bishop f3 and the c pawn stepped forward if rook g1 then you will lose your pawn on a2, that's why white played bishop f3, and there comes c4. a3, bishop d6, queen a7, c3, and at this point Capablanca resigned. Uh, of course, with queen e3, white can somehow prolong his resistance, but anyways, white's position is lost. But if I move like queen a8 in order to win this bishop, then black can simply keep on pushing forward his c pawn, and if you capture on e8, then bishop f8, and there, there is no way to stop this guy. The threat is rook b1 check. If rook g1, then instead of rook b1, there is this beautiful rook h2 check. And then black queen appears on the board. Black is winning. That's why on move 37 after c3, Capablanca extended his hand. So that was a very nice victory by Ilyan Zhenevsky. Of course, he played very passively, on which Capablanca failed to rely. But once again, that queen sacrifice followed by a counterattack was very nice. As you know, in those times, Capablanca was almost unbeatable, and it was very difficult to beat him. Uh, for example, from February 1916 to March 1924, he was unbeatable for eight years. And in 1925, seems like that this was the only tournament at which he participated. He first suffered a loss from Ilyan Zhenevsky, and then Boris Verlinsky also managed to beat the reigning world chess champion. The reason that Capablanca uh, stayed unbeaten for so long is that uh, he was not competing too much. Of course, he was strong, very strong, but uh, unlike modern chess grandmasters, for example, unlike Magnus Carlsen, he was not participating at tournaments too much. Uh, anyways, I uh, hope that you enjoyed this game and the brilliant queen sacrifice by Ilyan Zhenevsky. And in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.